In this example, we've got a pipe coming out of a tank of water. And the tank of water is filled to a depth of five meters. So we have five meters of water in this tank that's going to be driving water through this pipe. And what we're trying to find is the velocity of the water coming out of the pipe U2. So the question here is asking what is the velocity of water coming out of this pipe U2 due to this five meters of water. But in this example, we're gonna be accounting for friction in the pipe, and we're also gonna be accounting for loss of energy as the water exits the tank into the pipe. So, in a previous example, we looked at applying Bernoulli's equation between two points to solve a problem like this. So we said, if we have point number one at the water surface of the tank and point number two at the outlet of the pipe, and we write out Bernoulli's equation, we know that elevation plus pressure at one plus velocity at one equals elevation at two plus pressure head at two plus velocity head at two. And in the previous example, what we did was we took Bernoulli's equation and we applied it between point number one and point number two. So we said that at point number one, all of the energy is in elevation. So all of the energy at point number one is potential in the form of elevation. And at point number two, all of the, ele all of the energy is in kinetic energy in the form of velocity head. So we could equate the five meters of potential energy at one to five meters of velocity head at two and then solve this equation for two. What we're doing in this example now is introducing the concept of losses. So instead of having perfect conservation of useful energy between point number one and point number two, we're gonna have some losses of energy. So as we looked at in the last few videos, we're gonna have friction in this pipe ball that's gonna take away some of our useful energy we're also going to have turbulence in this pipe, which is going to add resistance, which is going to take away some of our useful energy. And we're going to have a loss of energy as our fluid tries to force its way into this pipe. We're going to get some losses as that fluid has to direct itself into the pipe. So the losses we're going to account for, we're going to account for loss of head due to friction using the darcy weibach equation that we looked at in a few videos ago. And we're gonna account for local losses at this exit point from the tank. So we're gonna look at K times u squared over two G. So those are the two equations we're gonna to use to account for our losses. And our total losses are gonna be subtracted from this half of the equation. So what we're now saying in Bernoulli's equation is that the total energy at one minus the loss of useful energy in the pipe is gonna give us the total energy at two. So total energy at one are these terms here, minus losses is gonna give us total energy at two. So we're trying to solve this equation for U2 as it comes out of the pipe. So what we can do is exactly the same thing as we did in the last example, we can cancel out the terms that we don't need to consider at point one and point two. So at point number one, all of our energy is in elevation. We don't have any pressure because there's no water above point number one, or at least it's atmospheric pressure, which would be the same as point number two. We don't have any velocity because we can assume that any movement of water at the surface will be negligible compared to the movement of water inside the pipe. At point number two, we also have no pressure because we're leaving the pipe so the particle is not pressurized and we have no elevation because we're at the bottom of the system. So what we can say to solve this problem, we know that Z1 minus losses equals U2 squared over 2G. So this is how we would formulate the problem. We've just taken out the terms that we don't need to worry about and we've ended up with Z1 minus losses equals U2 squared over 2G. So if we write that out, what we get is Z1 minus our losses. So our losses are our losses due to friction, which would be F times L over D 
u squared over 2g minus our losses as we our local losses as the pipe exits the tank so k u squared over 2g equals u2 squared over 2g and as we're assuming that we've got a steady system the velocity in this pipe as a diameter doesn't change needs to be the same at every point so these velocities will be also be u2 so we now have a situation where everything is known apart from our velocities so we need to find our velocity terms but everything else in this equation is known so we can assume a value for gravity we know what L is because we told it in the question we know what D is because we told it in the question we know what F is because we told it in the question and we're also given Z so the only unknown in this equation is U so all we really need to do is some factorization to solve this equation for U so the way I would do this if we go step by step I would start by taking all of the U terms onto one side of the equation so we could say that Z1 equals u2 squared over 2g plus fl over d u2 squared over 2g plus k u2 squared over 2g so we've got u2 squared over 2g plus a series of constants times u2 squared over 2g plus a constant times u2 squared over 2g so it's going to be useful for us if we put these numbers in and reduce this down to being one number for each u2 squared over 2g term so this would be u2 squared over 2g plus our friction factor which is 0.02 given in the question times our pipe length which is 100 meters divided by our pipe diameter which is 0.1 meters times u2 squared over 2g plus k which is given as 0.5 times u2 squared over 2g and what we end up here with is with u2 squared over 2g plus 20 times u2 squared over 2g. So all of these terms combined gives us 20 plus 0.5 u2 squared over 2g. So because we have uh, a series of u2 squared over 2g's with a constant in front of them so we could say we've got 1 here, 20 here and 0.5 here we can just factorize them and put them into a bracket so we can just say that that is the same as 1 plus 20 plus 0.5 u2 squared over 2g which leaves us with a final answer of 21.5 times u2 squared over 2g so at the end of a bit of algebra we end up by saying that z1 equals 21.5 times u2 squared over 2g we can just rearrange that for u so we can say that u is the square root of z1 over 21.5 times 2 times g if we enter our z1 value as 5 meters that gives us a final answer of a velocity coming out of this pipe of 2.136 meters per second so that is how we would work out the velocity coming out of this pipe when we're accounting for losses due to friction and local losses at the exit from the tank and we get a final answer of 2.136 meters per second